just think that after EIB, we'll have two to three topics left. So by hopefully in next week, um, you know, this session should be over. Okay, I think we are able to see the screen now, right? Yeah, here we have to select inbound. Now, why are we selecting inbound and what is the use of inbound, guys? Tell me. Inbound we are selecting so that we can get the data inserted into Workday, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, to put the name, any anything of your choice, oh, the code that you have used, you can use that, or you can use my code. That does not matter. But yeah. Underscore ib inbound. Okay. Or you can just say in. That is also fine. Okay. Click on okay. Now you see, you have the general settings, right? And on the left-hand side, same type of things you will see. What are you seeing here is get data, transformation, and delivery, okay? So these three steps are common. And then you have the name and ID. So name and ID is basically, um, general thing without that you can't move forward so now you can go ahead and click on next so from where are we going to get the data so just think that this is going to be an inbound system correct so the source of data that we are going to get is a third party yes or no yes yeah Yes. So if it is a third party, which means either I have to build a connection and get the data from there, or there is already a connection, I just need to use it, or they can send us the, you know, the file and we can insert it into the system manually, correct? So these are the only three ways. Is there any other way you can think of that you can get the data from the third party? First is build a connection and you know, that is basically your CICD, continuous integration, continuous deployment, right? So that once that connection is built, you can get the data from there whenever you want. You will run the integration, you will automate the process, and you will be able to get the data. Second thing is, uh, if they send us the data in any other form, and we are there to insert it manually, right? So I said there is a third thing also. What is the third thing? Initially, I said three things. Anybody remembers it? Yes, no. Don't you recall. Call the file. Hmm, sorry, can you repeat? File, what? Yeah, I mean, as for of, like you said, we can get the file and from there also we can get the data. Right. So now you click on that, which is the retrieval method, right? See, it is exactly the same as you saw in the delivery method. In the outbound, we saw that this option was there in delivery method. Why was it there in delivery method? And now why it is there in the retrieval method? Can anybody explain me? Mm -hmm. Guys. 
Yeah, because source could be from from those like when we are going to send, it will be from these list, or when we are going to consume, it could be a uh, source could be a S three bucket or um, FTP, SFTP, or somewhere. Yeah. So ju just think in this way. In the outbound integration, I am sending the data to a third party. Okay. So my source of data is Workday. And I will extract the data first. I'll transform it. And then finally, I'll build a connection to send the data. Correct? That is how it works? Yeah. Yeah. Right? But here, it is just the opposite. First, we have to build a connection, get the data from whom? from the third party system and then transform it in such a way that it can be inserted into Workday. Third option, perform that operation which helps you to insert the data into Workday. So there is a major difference. What is that major difference? The connection in outbound is done at the end and in inbound the connection is done at the first step itself because I have to get the data from them. Does it make sense to all of you? Yeah. Okay. So here also, see, I mean, we don't have a real-time system, right? We already have used Amazon Simple Server Storage. We have understood about it, right? HTTP, FTP, all those we have discussed and understood. So let's try to use attach file at launch. That is the option we are going to use, attach file at launch. So why we are using it, I'll tell you about it in a few minutes. Okay, attach file at launch and then scroll it down. See, that is asking, they are asking for the data format. Because Workday has a very specific format of the data. Okay. That's the they are that's the reason they are looking for a specific workday format data. So here you see file type. So in the file type, I will request uh, the third party team when they are sending the data to me. Okay. I can as easily pick it and do what? Guys, I can easily pick that file and do what? Transformation. Yeah, transformation. Insert data in Workday. Actually, yes. Transformation would already be done. That's the transformation when the data is put in the right field, right column name and everything. Okay. So here you see, it says file type. File type is web service spreadsheet template. And then you see, it says web service operation. Click on that. So what do you see here? You have multiple web services that is provided by Workday. Now all these web service that you see, it is basically using SOAP. All these operations that you're seeing here, it is all using SOAP. Now, how many of you actually understand what is SOAP? Mm -hmm. Guys, SOAP, REST. Yeah. I don't know. I have to. Okay, so only Jitendra is understanding what is SOAP, okay? So no worries. Anyways, we are going to discuss that in our next topic. So whatever you're seeing here, right? If you see, it's a completely uh, different type of sections that you have. Absence management, academic uh, advising, academic foundation, right? 
all the things that you see, these are all separate, separate modules within Workday. Yes or no? These are all different, different modules that you have. Now let's imagine a use case for inbound. Suppose your client with whom you are working, they were using PeopleSoft, okay? Once they use PeopleSoft, now they are migrating to Workday. And they have 10,000 locations where their offices are created. So the same 10,000 location has to be created in the Workday system also? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So if you know the functional part, Have you created location? Anybody? Yes, yes. I did in the core HCM. Yeah, in the core HCM, did you create the location? Yes, yes. So for one location, how much time did you take? Five minutes. Five, six minutes? Yes. And that also, if you have experience, then only. Initially, people may not have so much of experience. So, just imagine 10,000 locations. And if I'm using five minutes for one location, so 10,000 into five, 50,000 minutes you require to transform, sorry, to transport the data from PeopleSoft to Workday and getting that created or inserted, right? Yes. Yes or no? No. Yes. So 10,000, sorry, into five, 50,000. So how many hours of work that you're doing? Just think in that perspective. You know, it's up close to 80, 90 hours that we are doing, okay? So just to insert 10,000 locations all at once, I will use inbound integrations because inbound integrations or outbound integrations, whatever it is, it helps you reduce your execution time. It saves you a lot of time. And indeed, if your people are not working, then your money is also saved, right? So what you do here is, or what we are doing here is, um, we will use, just type in put location. Type in put location. Hit enter. See, there are multiple things that you said. Put location, put location attribute, put location customer account, right? Now, there are two types of functions when you talk about web service in Workday. One is called as get and one is called as put. So do you understand the difference between get and put? Yeah. Anybody? Yes. Okay. Can you help me understand what is get and what is put? Yeah, so when we are going to read some data from web service or from the source, mm -hmm. we will call a get and when we are going to write or write data on on the server mm. then we'll use put or post put or post okay see uh, the important part within workday you have rightly stated that if i have to extract the data from workday system i'm going to use get method and if I have to insert the data into Workday, then I have to use the post method or you can say push method. Here, the web services names are also like that. If you want to extract the data, you will get get keyword and with that keyword, you will be able to get all the information. Then you have what? Put information. And put is basically used for inserting the data into Workday. So put helps you perform those activities 
without any difficulty okay so is the difference between them clear to all of you get and put yes yes or no okay yes then we have selected put location and i give you an example we have taken a use case that we are going to insert 10000 locations all at once okay click on next still loading now you see transformation or you can say transform so here you don't have options it will always be a template model because we are using a web service spreadsheet model right click on that and see what is that you are going to see so it says template model right so the transformation is done through template model now what is template model because we are using our own web service which is our inbound web service which is location which means this web service will contain the structure the api of the complete location are you getting my point yes or no can you hear me yes, yes. yeah so what i'm trying to say here is this is using the template model now template will be generated by workday and send it to the third party so that once they return the template to us it contains the value in the way we have desired and that's the reason all this kind of integration use template model okay i mean i hope it is clear to all of you yes okay click on next now finally it's asking you for your delivery so where exactly the delivery would be done tell me where exactly are we going to deliver the data in workday um... yes so we are going to deliver the data inside workday so that's the reason here you see what does it say delivery method workday web service operation now why it is saying workday web service operation what is the reason behind it anybody so we are using workday web services in one exactly and th and then below that you see it says put location web service right so the web service name is also there and we are doing web service operation right and that's the delivery is being done in workday that's the reason we use it yeah now let's go ahead and click on next so this is the summary so we have put the name id get the data from where we are getting the data as a source file and that source file is coming from a different system then data format then you see the transformation that what is the web service that it is using it will always highlights so here it see it is in blue color and then the delivery the delivery has to be done inside workday that's the best part so you take the responsibility and go ahead now and click on okay so the configuration wise <clears throat> configuration wise my inbound is created okay yeah let's click on okay so now the integration system that you see it's an inbound integration system so first of all what we have to do is we need to send the template to the third party then only they'll be able to insert the value and give it to give the template back to us correct yes or no yes yes so for that we will generate templates now from where we are going to generate the template yes click on actions there is an option generate 
I mean, not there, but yeah, template model. No, no, no. There is an option which says template model. Right. And then there is an option which says generate spreadsheet template. Yes. Please click on that. And there are two options. One is your Excel. Yeah. Click on it. And there are two options. One is Excel. One is XML. So, you know, for all of your convenience, people, those who are not aware about XML, let's generate Excel template. Okay. Click on submit. So what is the significance of this? Generate spreadsheet with data. See, we don't need our data. We need oh, to get the hand. data from the third party. It is just asking you that you want the data also to be present in the spreadsheet. We will say no. Because the data has to come from third party. Let's just click on submit. So here it will run in integration. But what is going to happen? This is not an integration. It is just generating a file. So very soon in the output file, uh, you will see one value coming in. Saying put location not now available in my reports. Right. Yeah. So that is the file. So just refresh it once. You'll get it in the output file. You see in the output file, you have one document. Click on that. Okay. So this will take some time for me for them to do it. Okay, what I was trying to explain you here is, see, once you receive this template, right? So this template will give you the complete structure of location business object. So we have studied business object, right? Do you remember it? Mm -hmm. What is business object used for? It only stores all the data. So this is the facility where you will have all the data. Absolutely correct. So if it is containing the data, which means the column names that it has, it has to be in perfectly, uh, you know, fine state. Yes or no? Yes. Because if you, if the column names are there, it must match with the API name. Correct? Right. So if the API name is there, so in that, what will happen when you generate the template, you know, the web service template. So that template basically will give you the name of the, what? The name of the? Column. Columns with the data type and what kind of action it has. So for example, location ID or location name and location usage. These two things are mandatory. I'm just giving an example. Location name and location usage. These two things are mandatory. Now, if we have, uh, uh, when you have all these structure correctly, the field name, and then you have your relationship, then you have your, uh, you know, data types, and then finally the API name of the fields. So if all these things are correctly put and as a part of the template, what you have to do is, see as a third party, the first thing that you have to do is map this field that you have got from Workday to the field that you have in your system. And we took an example of PeopleSoft, right? So PeopleSoft and Workday are very common but the fields are different. It's not the same type of field. So what is happening here that they are going to take that value. I hope you're getting the point. Yes, no. Yes. Okay. So does the template also shows us which which fields are mandatory and the option? Yes, yes. Required fields. Yes, it will show you that also. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to log in? Just run the integration once again. I want you to download that template.
what have you mentioned that it is asking you for the name of the EIB? Mm -hmm. Run it once again. Oh, click on actions. Generate spreadsheet template. Yeah, what happened? It is still blocking. Can you hear me? Yeah, mm, I don't know. It is. I mean, is it still blocking or no, it's not? It's not blocking, but it came to this page and then... Refresh blank. it once, refresh. Click on that file once again. What is it? Blocked by your organization. They are trying to make the changes. I think that's the reason you're not able to do it. Not a problem. Uh, see, what I was supposed to do now is once this file template would have been generated and it was in front of you, then what we could have done is, uh, let me see if I am able to connect to my tenant. Give me a few minutes, okay? It will, you know, this will help us wrap up this chapter itself. So we'll spend some like five, 10 minutes and then finish it off. I'll try to connect to my tenant once again because my user has that uh, ability that I can actually download the uh, template for your practice you would need it so i have asked them to remove that uh, you know limitation because deliberately it was put so that you all not you should not face any difficulty okay so give me a few minutes in the meantime, do you have any questions? Anybody is not able to understand anything. I mean, you feel that, no, I, I, I am not able to get it properly. Because. Yeah, I have one question. So um, yesterday or day before yesterday, you are showing us the web services directory. Yes. Or yes. Where you can get there? No, no. You have put IN or, okay, yeah, that's fine. Search it, hit enter, hit enter. That is fine. Click on more categories. Yeah, click on this one. Click on refresh once again. Right. Do, do you see that? Still, it is showing block by organ. Okay. Guys, there is a challenge then. But this side it is showing, right? Put location XLX is now available in your report. Click on that. Because it's a template, it will be generated. But anyways, we need to download this. Why we need to download, the reason for that is uh, we can't work without downloading it. 
without the download, it will not allow us. Okay. All right, everything is set. I just have to generate the template. Excel, submit. Okay, so here it is put location 17. And I don't know why that is so many files in my remote desktop. Now you see what, what you are able to see here. It is more like a template, right? And the template has what? Column names. And it has column. the column names. So if you have, um, you know, uh, gone through the, uh, functional training right see this is a field which is location name and it is required location usage required and may have multiple values right so if you go through all that right whatever things are required you will come to know whatever things are not required you will see that so these are the two fields where you have required value let's say i'm putting the values now delhi And the value would be business site. See, that is how it works. Suppose I'm a third party right now. So my job will be to fill in all the details from my system into this template. How? So suppose I'm uh, relocating, relocating in the sense I'm migrating from PeopleSoft to Workday. So in my PeopleSoft, what is the location called? I don't know, right? Whatever it is called, that table, and now we have got the location business object from Workday. Their field should map with each other so that when they actually fetch the value from um, PeopleSoft, it can be straight away put into this template. Are you getting my point? Yes or no? Yes, yes. All of you. So yeah, I just put two values. Now what I'll do, I will actually run the integration now. So why I will run the integration? Because see, at the moment, we have just generated the template, but the integration has still not run. How will we run it? We will run it through this option to click on, okay, click on this integration. Click on action. Go to integration, launch it. and then click on OK. See, this is asking for the integration attachment. Now, what is this integration attachment? This is the place where you put the integration attachment file. Put location 17, OK. Now, I've added that into the execution place. Okay, you see that? Your file is now here. Now, what we are doing is we are trying to insert the data into Workday. So here you see, it will tell you whether you want to have a load error limit. No, as many errors are there, you give it to me. And there is one more option which says validate only load. So what will happen here if I check this box? So this is a 
testing mechanism. Now, when I say testing mechanism, what does that mean? So, for example, I have not automated the process. I have done. I have put it manual still. So, once the data is received, I will go ahead and run the integration. But I will only do the validation. Now, what is this validation? What does that mean? It means that the file will run as it is supposed to run. It will check whether the data which has come in from the third party, if it is correct or not, if it is as per the requirement or not. If it is not there, then it will throw the error and then you can send the error back to the vendor stating that you have not shared the data in the right format. And once the data is here, you can use that. That should not be a problem. So this is a testing mechanism. I have got the file. I will run that file. I'll not insert the data, but I'm just running so that I'll come to know that if there is any error, let's say in place of a one field, another field value is there, right? So it will not insert it it will throw an error. Yes or no? Yes. So that error, I will come to know and I'll send that file, the error file to the vendor who has sent the data to us stating that, see, these are the errors. Please fix it and resend the file. So once they have resend it, I'll again validate. If there is no error, then only I will not validate it anymore. I will insert the data into work the system. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right now I'm not validating. I am directly inserting it into progress system. So if I have an error, it will generate an error file. If I don't have an error, it will not generate. So here we are not going to get any output files. Why we are not going to get any output files? The reason is if there is error, then only your output file will come. If there is no error, then the data will be inserted. So we will wait for a message. See, it says completed. Now it says success. All records loaded successfully. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, yeah. So now what you're able to do, you are able to insert the data from a third party into Workday system using this template model. Right. I hope it is clear to all of you. Yes. yes no. And if we want to see that ingested data, we have to create a report and run it to see, or is there another way to see it? I, I did not get your question. What report you're looking for? So I'm saying we have, let's suppose we have ingested two rows or two records in the location mm -hmm. object. Mm -hmm. And if we want to validate end to end that, yeah, it is inserted in the object. Uh, so I can go from where I can see that my records is inserted into the object or not. From where you can see that. That's yeah. your question. Yeah. yeah. So here I will have to uh, check on the workday system. I'll have to build a report. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, okay. so we have to build a report to find whether I the data which I have inserted into Workday, has it come or not? Not yet, yeah. So there is no other way of validation. All right, is there anything else? I hope no. you have understood how inbound EIB works. Oh, Devasish, I have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, how will you share our template template to third party system? Well, you can send it anyways, right? Third party means what? Uh, other system. So they are people of previous days. On no, 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 no. Other system is fine, but you will send it to consultant, your people soft consultant. Mm -hmm. You can send it through email. Okay. So that is not automated system. Sending the template is not automation. Okay. You have to give that template to them. How will okay. you do that? The best way is email. Send them an email. Okay. 
so even uh, after they fill the data in the mm. template uh, even they'll uh, send back the data through mail no if that is not manual i mean sorry if that is not automated your automation is not there then they will send it through uh, send us by the email if you have a automated email okay. or you have automated integration so they will f- uh, fill the data and they will upload it in the server okay in the real time uh, it's like uh, you said like there is concept like automation yes that's what i'm saying again i'll tell you mm-hmm. when we were building the uh, integration right okay. i'll show it to you we selected attachment there yes or no the first yes, step yes. yes so if we in case we don't select attachment there if i say that okay there is a real time connection between workday and aws server and there is three bucket so if that file is there it will run the integration it will try to fetch that file are you getting my point no yeah. sorry i could not hear you yes yes okay see this is the place so i've got the get data option right so here i have put attach at file attach at file at launch because i don't have a real time system but at that place let's say ftp right so okay. if they have ftp then they will not send us the template directly to us they will upload it here in the ftp server in oh. the directory where they keep the data so okay. what happens whenever the integration runs wherever the integration runs it will look for the change file so if there is a new file there then it will pick it up automatically run the integration insert the data does that make sense yes so that is how your automation works oh. okay yep that is all from my side for today i, I don't have anything more so now we have completed eib inbound eib outbound both the things are completed so instead of launch where you have the launch right i'll just show it to you how did you schedule the report do you remember yes or no you just do uh, frequency there we can exactly the same thing is here also it is exactly the same it is not different so if you see run once in future minute hourly daily weekly monthly right so if you don't want to run now you want to schedule it that is the automation right so how you can fix it is this this is the way okay. i can't show no, you sir, the real is or uh, suppose uh... we in uh, we schedule it like a uh, okay that comes in core connector i think when we go there we can just... no no tell me what is that uh will it will be like for uh, for future th- 90 days effective date we take all these things right current moment effective date all these things so uh, how that will come in core connector uh, yeah yeah that's why i just remember yes yes Uh, the effective yeah. date uh, you know all those things yes yeah even uh, while we prepare the report custom report uh, we can yeah, the same thing it. we can schedule it right like uh, yeah, exactly the same thing that's okay. what i said exactly the same thing okay. so scheduling the way you have been scheduling reports your integration can also be scheduled in the same way this will give the will check the option like it is weekly monthly and will give the effective dates and will uh, just click on okay right then it will um, run it according to our instructions sir yes there was issue so we discussed about eib so if this uh, information is enough uh, for the yeah, this, this is what eib is in workday mm-hmm. there is nothing more than this in eib you only have these things there is okay. nothing more than that okay.